Uh, good morning. Uh, the purpose of this WebEx session is to provide information on the graduation setup at the Clean Civic and Conference Center, uh, such as the parking areas, the meeting rooms for the faculty, graduates, and stage party, the processional, and other information. The webinar will be presented by Emma Hutchins, the Associate Dean of Enrollment Services, and myself, um, John L. Welsh, the Dean for Student Services. First of all, as a friendly reminder, the uh, fall graduation will be held at the Clean Civic and Conference Center on Thursday, December the 12th. That's next Thursday. And the ceremony will start at 6.30 p.m. Okay. Uh, CPC has leased uh, the facility, uh, the entire facility, except for the offices of the staff here at the center, which means we have a facility from 7 a.m. to midnight. If all goes well, KISD TV will be streaming the graduation live and plans to have its equipment set up by 1 p.m. Uh, student services staff will begin set up at 8 a.m. Plans are with the front doors to the center to be locked until 4.30 p.m. Hence, facilities and other setup groups should plan to enter the center from the back parking lot. Uh, this is an overview of the Civic Center's uh, parking lot. Uh, the green arrows indicate the entrance to the back parking lot is entering from the WS Young Drive. Reserved parking area is identified by the yellow arrow and the little comment over there, if you can see that. Uh, the reserved parking uh, is for the stage party and their families, the VIPs and guests designated by the chancellor. Uh, I just want to review some key timelines. Um, as a friendly reminder, most all of the setup should be done by noon so that the staff can then have a break before returning later in the day. Mrs. Hutchins has advised, asked that the advising staff arrive by 3 p.m. and in anticipation of graduates arriving earlier than 5 o'clock p.m. Faculty have already been provided guidance by Dean Anderson to arrive by 5.30 p.m. We recommend that the CTC Board of Trustees, the executive officers, and Dean arrive by 6 PM so that they will be available to greet the highest honored graduates and take photos between 6 o'clock and 6 p.m. At this time, there are three graduates identified as highest honor. Around 6.20 p.m., the announcer, Fred Shevin, will make an announcement to the audience that this ceremony will be starting soon and for the audience to please find their way to their seats. Uh, I just want to go over some changes from last fall. Uh, it's graduation. The, the ceremony this year will include the posting of the colors by our Central Texas College Army ROTC <laughs> Color Guard. Uh, rather than the graduates entering from the right side of the ballroom as they did last year at the Civic Center, the graduates will enter from the center front doors leading into the ballroom, which are opposite to the stage. CTC, CTC has opted to return to the blue grounds for graduates. And this year, the CTC Bookstore has graduation invitations available for graduates to purchase. So uh, please encourage your graduates if they ask about the invitations, let them know that they are available at the bookstore. Okay, this is a very detailed overview of the, the entire layout for the facility. Okay. Uh, graduates should enter the facility from the back parking lot on the right side if facing the center and go to meeting rooms one and two, okay, uh, to pick up their name card. Patrice Kenderson from the CTC's Veteran Services will also be in the room to provide the customary red, white, and blue cords to veterans participating in the ceremony. The cords are only available to veterans participating in the ceremony. After receiving their name card and veteran cord, if applicable, the graduates should proceed to the special event room to receive further guidance. And Eva Hutchins and her advisors will be in that room. Faculty should enter from the back doors left of the center, if you're facing the center, and proceed to meetings rooms three and four, or five or six, depending on their department. There will be copies of the faculty list by department taped to the walls outside the meeting room. If faculty wish to visit their graduates in the special events room, please wear your regalia. The stage party will meet in the executive board room, which is located on the opposite side of the hallway across from the faculty. 
Uh, you do not see the boardroom on that layout, but uh, Sarah is showing you where it's located. Uh, then, uh, okay, and the stage platform is there in the center, and that's where the stage party will uh, be seated. The rows in the center front of the stage party are where the graduates will sit. There are eight rows of 30 seats each. Uh, right now we have how many um, graduates who indicate they would be attending Debbie? 297. Debbie said we have 297. Uh, we're planning for 240 seats due to the uh, normal attrition, uh, but we will play that kind of by ear, and if we have to add additional seats, we will do so. That will be flank the graduates on each side, okay? Reserved seating for the stage party families and VIPs will be the first two rows of the chairs positioned diagonally to the left of the faculty when facing the stage. Okay. So, so the VIPs and the reserved seating, they'll be, go, be able to go directly from the boardroom into uh, the seating. And that would also apply to our staff. We have um, you know, staff such as, I think last year, Mrs. Jordan attended and some other individuals attended. So we do have the research reserve seating for the first two rows. The remaining chairs are for open seating as are the chairs positioned diagonally on the right side of the ballroom. The majority of audience seating is behind the faculty and the graduates. Okay, entry into the ballroom. The order of entry uh, for the procession will be the faculty first, the graduates, and then the stage party. Uh, I'm going to just kind of review the opening uh, script for the announcer, Mr. Fred Chavez is the announcer, and Dean Jean Jan Anderson is our master of ceremony. Around 6.20 p.m., Mr. Chavez will begin asking the audience to find their way to the seat. Around 6.25, he will announce the ceremony, will start shortly, and introduce the CTC chorus, who will be singing higher and higher. After the CTC chorus is finished, Mr. Chavez will welcome the audience and announce the faculty processional. This is the cue for the CTC band to start the pomp and circumstance. Faculty will not be seated alphabetically, rather they will be seated by their department. Once the faculty have reached their seat, they should remain standing by the seat, facing the graduates as they enter. After the faculty reach their seating area, Mr. Chavez will announce the graduating class. And after the graduates are seated, Mr. Chavez will announce the stage party led by the Chancellor and the CTC Board of Trustees here, Mr. Rex Weaver. The next slides will provide a visual view of the processional. At this time, I'll turn the microphone over to Eva Hutchins. Thank you, Dean Welsh. All right, so at this point, the faculty are being led by um, staff into the ballroom. As you can see on the slide, they'll enter from the left side. So faculty for meeting the Meeting room five and six <clears throat> will enter on the left side of the stage and proceed to the faculty seating. Faculty from meeting room three and four will enter around the back hallway and come in on stage right to their seating area. The faculty will be divided into two groups um, and will be led by Amy Williams and Shannon uh, and Karen. The order of the the order of the stage party or the faculty is um, Professor Jane Gibson will lead one group, and the other group will be led by the faculty member that is ready. Okay, and the graduate processional um, is pictured here on the slide, and after the graduates line up in the special events room, which is on the side of the screen being um, indicated. Um, they will be led out into the hallway. And at this point, there will be um, various staff members assisting with stage control, as myself and my staff will be working with the graduates to line up into the correct order and proceed into two columns in preparation for entry into the ballroom. So there will be uh, members of staff assisting with the public, um, as this is um, entry into the ballroom through the public hallway. 
Uh, we will enter through the middle doors into the ballroom into two columns, and they will be lined up in order uh, that the graduates will receive their diploma across the stage. So column one will enter on stage left, as indicated by the red arrow, and column two will enter in on the right, as indicated by the green arrow, led by staff. Any graduate who arrives late, this is a continuation of the um, same uh, procession for the graduates, just showing the order of, the, of that happening with um, some additional information. Graduates who arrive late, uh, as we do understand that can happen, traffic delays, et cetera, will be inserted into the graduation lineup at the end. Any graduate who um, makes an effort to, to leave the line and try to return will also be inserted at the end um, in order to ensure that the proper order of graduates is held true. As previously mentioned, the stage party enters the ballroom lab. Mark Paulette will lead the stage party across the hall from the executive boardroom so that they can be ready to enter the ballroom when Mr. Chavez announces their entry. The stage party will, divide, will be divided into two groups. Mr. Rex, Rex Weaver, the CTC Board of Trustees Chair, will lead the group entering the stage from the left. The Chancellor will lead the group entering the stage from the right. The stage party's entry into the facility is the same as the Expo Center, but entering from the opposite side. Each stage party group will march down the aisle between the faculty and graduate seating. Once the stage party is on the platform, they should remain standing. And at this time, I will turn it back over to you, Mosh. Okay, this is the stage party seating, okay? at this point in time, and I know that it's very small print, you won't be able to see that, but there will actually be a handout at the executive board room, and there will be staff, uh, Corey Henson and Mark Paulette, to help the executive board room uh, members uh, prior to the ceremony to provide guidance on the seat. Uh, the current plans are for Colonel Westbrook, commander of the Fort Hood Garrison, to enter the ballroom right behind Mr. Weaver. The commencement speaker, Representative Brad Buckley, will follow the chancellor onto the stage. Okay. After the stage party is on stage, Mr. Chavez will introduce Dean Anderson. Uh, Dean Anderson will move to the podium and ask everyone to stand for the posting of the photo and to remain standing for the national anthem. Okay. Uh, this is a diagram of how the CTC, Army ROTC, will come in. They will come in from the right side uh, the same side where the graduates are located, or were lo located. Okay, they will uh, enter the facility and go across the stage and uh, post the colors. And then they will exit after the national anthem. The order of the speaker is in advance. Uh, after the national anthem, Dean Anderson will move to the podium again and announce Dr. Carter, who would provide the invocation. From there, the stage party follows the sequence in the graduation program. The chancellor will provide a short welcome. Dr. Heath represents the faculty. Mr. Rex Weaver represents the CTC Board of Trustees. Uh, Colonel Westbrook represents the Fort Hood Garrison. Uh, the commencement speaker, again, is Representative Brad Buckley, representing the 54th District of Texas. After the commencement address, certification and conferring a certificate to fill it. Okay. At this time, I'll turn the microphone over to Eva because she can go over um, how the uh, graduates will uh, receive their diploma. As this portion of the ceremony begins, uh, Dean Anderson will have instructed the graduates to rise. So during the certification of degrees, the graduates will be standing. Um, at this point, Diploma lineup will begin, uh, and the graduates will be instructed by Diane Asher from my staff um, to walk through the ballroom to uh, give their name card to the announcer, Mr. Chavez. So entry to the diploma lineup is the reverse of entry to the floor, and row one will enter from stage right and um, proceed to the announcer. 
and the remaining rows will be encouraged to uh, be seated as the program at this point um, uh, would be too long to remain standing for the graduates on the floor. And each row will be um, prompted when to go and proceed across the stage to the diploma lineup. <clears throat> Excuse me. After the students have walked across the stage and received their diploma, they will be directed by staff to the official um, event photographer, flash photography, which is indicated on the slide. They will then be led by staff to exit the doors on the uh, left side of the ballroom and return to their seating, um, again led by staff and shown on the chart here. At that time, I will turn it over to Dean Walsh. We're playing musical chairs here, so uh, we're sorry about that, okay? Uh, once the final graduate has received his or her diploma, Dean Anderson will ask, ask the graduates to stand and move their tassels from right to left, if I have that right, okay? Then Dr. Carter will provide the benediction. Uh, the recessional starts with the stage party exits the stage the same way that they ended. After the last minute, the minute, member of the stage party passes the first row of faculty seating, Professor Gibson and her counterpart in the faculty group on the right will march out at the same time until all faculty have left the ballroom. The graduates will be dismissed on the floor so that family and friends can join them for picture taking and congratulations. Okay. At this time, I, we just want to go over some FAQs. Uh, this information is also available on the CPC graduation webpage. Uh, graduates should return to, to their assigned seating after receiving their diploma. DVDs are no longer sold as there was very little demand. As a friendly reminder, no air horns are blown. This applies to students and the faculty and the stage party. <coughs> okay. Graduates should make arrangements to leave their personal belongings with family or friends as staff are not responsible for loss or stolen items. And this also applies to the faculty. We just do not have the staffing that anybody securing the room. Okay? Uh, also, as a friendly reminder, graduates are permitted to decorate the mortarboard as long as they follow the guidelines here. Decorations must be academic in nature or a celebration as a CPC graduate. The only stoves, tassels, cords, and medallions allowed are those that represent membership in the CPC sponsored honor society. As a friendly reminder, there will be two graduation orientations held upstairs in the Anderson Campus Center next week. Uh, the um, first starts on Monday morning, and the second orientation will be held Tuesday afternoon. And the times are there. Uh, and if you want to mention that the time to answer that right now. Um, correct. Currently, there is some information on the CPC Facebook page, but it's not correct on the time. So these, if you are looking at any other information, the information here on this slide is correct. Um, the presentation will begin at 10 a.m. on Monday, September 9th, and at 3 p.m. on September 10th. Students um, can arrive early um, to get their name card. And uh, talk to our alumni office. And even if a student was not able to participate in the orientation, the student can still march in the graduation ceremony. Okay. Also, um, I, I failed to mention that, you know, because we're wearing the blue gowns, and as always, the CPC bookstore will have extra gowns in the special events room. And so if a uh, a graduate decides at the last minute decides to march, and they did not. The graduate did not purchase a gown. Gowns will be available at the special events room for sale. So students will have to sign a statement that they do not have to pay for it at, at that morning. But they will have to sign a statement that they will come to the bookstore by Tuesday of the following week and make payment for the gown. Otherwise, they will go home. But so we want as many students uh, there as possible. And at this time, we'll turn it over to any questions. No answer. Um, straight to voice now. Look on Facebook. I have everybody unmuted. Did anybody have any questions? I hope he's okay with the other asthma attacks. 
That's the first thing I thought of. Everything from me. What's up with that? He's just like, get that person out your way, get that person out your way, you need to fall back to the eater. Get. You can always access any of our previous taxes on student services school website under the faculty and staff. Um, website. We will be sending out a link with the recording and the PowerPoint available. It will all be posted and a link to that. Again, we thank you all for joining us today. And if nobody has any questions, Hmm. Like, do you, are you plugging back? So I wanted to do. We will be signing out for the day. Hope to see you all at graduation on the twelfth. On the twelfth. We need to make a you guys. Thank you for joining us.